Surgeons at Johns Hopkins successfully performed the first penis and scrotum transplant in the world. Nine plastic surgeons and two urologists spent 14 hours working to attach a donor's body parts to an injured combat veteran. He suffered wounds from an IED blast while on tour in Afghanistan. Dr. David Congello joins me now on set. He's a board certified plastic surgeon. Just remarkable to hear about this. How did they manage to do this? Yeah, so Rena, this is a really interesting situation. I mean, we have, um, you know, a young veteran who had his, um, had an, an explosive device take his lower extremities as well as his genitalia. And what these surgeons did was they, they took abdominal tissue from, or tissue from the lower abdomen um, as well as the scrotum and penis and they transplanted it into this patient. So what that involves is um, reattaching certain blood vessels and nerves in order to make the tissue survive and to potentially function. So do you think that this man will have any limitations going forward? Absolutely. I mean, he'll have, uh, you know, a fair amount of limitations. One of the things with transplant surgery is that, um, you know, patients need to be on immunosuppressive therapy uh, for the rest of their lives. So what that means is they become potentially more susceptible to infections. So, you know, he'll have to be concerned about those sorts of things. Um, unfortunately, immunosuppressive therapy can also lead to cancer. So, mm. um, you know, there will be monitoring of him for the rest of his life. In addition to the fact that uh, just the survivability of the tissue, um, because it is a transplant, it's, it's susceptible to organ rejection. So for the rest of his life, this tissue will be monitored to make sure that that, you know, the body is not amounting a response to it and, and rejecting the tissue. Do you think that he'll be able to reproduce? That's a great question. So actually with this particular transplant, um, what we do not do at this point is we do not transplant the testicles. So he had the scrotum and the penis transplanted, but for ethical issues, um, we are not, you know, we're not performing those sorts of transplants because obviously the potential offspring would be that of the, the donor. So, um, you know, I think that the real issue here is making a person feel whole again. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, we sort of, I think, underestimate uh, how much of our identity revolves around our sexual identity. Mm -hmm. And so for this gentleman not having the penis, um, you know, I think it's, it's very important for him to feel like a whole person and have that, uh, particularly when it comes to the potential for entering relationships and things like that. You know, for so long, these combat veterans, there was a lot of focus with IEDs and brain swelling, and they were able to do remarkable surgery. But the fact that they're able to do this penis transplant, mm -hmm. what do you think it means for the medical field in general? I mean, I think it's, you know, it's fantastic. I mean, transplant surgery has come a long way. Uh, you know, we as plastic surgeons, um, you know, we've been uh, doing hand transplants for a number of decades now. Uh, most recently, what's been in the news is, is facial transplants, which is just fantastic for people who have severe facial injuries. And now, um, you know, they can have a new face transplant. And this is one of only a few genital transplantations that's been done. And, um, you know, I think it'll be really interesting to see going forward, um, first of all, from a functional standpoint, I think yeah. we know that, um, you know, having the tissue there is going to make him feel better emotionally. But, you know, if the tissue can regain function as well, um, I think it's just going to be sort of a, you know, a, a huge potential uh, breakthrough for these patients because it means a lot for them. So great to see also that this was a combat veteran that they're trying to help. And uh, so often you mentioned that, you know, you don't focus on the sexual aspect of this and how important it is. Absolutely. And, and this is, um, you know, this is obviously not uncommon in, in, in combat veterans. And, uh, you know, in reading the, the article about this particular individual, um, there was a comment that, you know, some of his fellow veterans uh, joked that they'd rather have a limb blown off than, than anything else. And so mm. it really is truly important to these yeah. people. And, and this is fantastic that we're making these sorts of strides and able to um, transplant these, these organs. Dr. David Kinjala, thank you very much for joining us. Thanks for having me.